Hey guys, today we're going to learn calculus in 10 minutes or less, so let's get going. So finding the slope of a straight line is really easy, and we know on a position time graph, slope's velocity. That's useful. But what if we have a curve? Finding the slope of a curve is harder. We have to find the slope at a point. So here we're trying to find the slope where that dotted blue line hits the green line. So we could pick two points on the curve, find the slope of that line, but that may not be the, exactly right. So let's pick two points that are closer to where we're looking at. Well, I, I could be closer. Let's pick two points that are even closer to the point we're looking for. Okay, we can still find the slope of that if we keep going and we get closer and closer to that, that location that we're trying to find, we're going to end up with our red line being tangent to the curve. That's how we find derivatives. So a derivative is just the slope of a function at a point. So we can have the slope of a curve at a single point. That's that tangent line. So on a position time graph, that slope is going to be velocity. On a velocity time graph, it's acceleration. On an acceleration time graph, the slope is called the jerk. It really is. So those are going to be the derivatives of those functions. Let's see how we do that. Here's how you write a derivative. So ddt tells us you're taking the derivative with respect to time. And then we say what we're taking the derivative of. So ddt x of t, the way you read that is the derivative of position with respect to time. And you could shorthand that by saying x prime. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's just a way of writing things. The derivative of position with respect to time is velocity as a function of time. Same thing, derivative of velocity with respect to time is acceleration as a function of time. And the derivative of acceleration with respect to time, that gives us the jerk as a function of time. There's a few rules we need to follow in order to find the derivatives. These are uh, shortcuts. You'll learn some harder ways in calculus. But these are shortcuts for how we can find the derivatives. So the first one, derivative of a constant is always zero. Piece of cake, doesn't matter what the constant is. Second one, this is the one you're going to use a lot, uh, the derivative of t to the power. t is our variable because it's in the bottom of that ddt. So everything else is some sort of a constant. So t to the n equals nt to the n minus 1. You're going to use that a lot. Uh, derivative of e to the t, just e to the t. Pretty straightforward. And the derivative of the natural log of t gives you 1 over t. Okay, those last two you won't encounter as often, but you will from time to time. So let's try this. Here we have a position function. Uh, position is a function of time. And we want to find the velocity function and the acceleration function. So to find the velocity function, we take the derivative of position with respect to time. So we're going to go and look at each term in that position function. 14t cubed is one term. We're going to find the derivative of that term and then add the derivative of the next term and keep going on until we get through all of them. So the derivative of 14t cubed is going to be 14 times 3t to the 3 minus 1. We're following that rule on the previous page. Uh, do the same thing for the next term. 2t squared, derivative of that is going to be 2 times 2t to the 2 minus 1. Keep doing that all the way through, and then we're going to simplify, and we have our velocity function. If we do it again, we can get the acceleration function. So we'll do the derivative of velocity is acceleration, we take the derivative of each of those terms following the rules, and then we simplify it, and we end up with our acceleration function. Now finding the area under the graph that's a straight line, such as this one, is pretty easy. Find a triangle, we know the area of a triangle, we took geometry, easy. But what if we have a curve, and we want to find the area under the curve? That's harder. That's where integrals come in. Integrals are also known as antiderivatives. On a graph, it's just the area under a curve. So we know that a velocity time graph, the area under the curve is the displacement. That means the integral is going to be displacement. Let's see how this works. So this is what an integral looks like. Uh, it's just the opposite of a derivative. You have that integral sign, the long s looking thing. So here we'd say we have the integral of the jerk with respect to time equals the acceleration. That dt tells us that t is our variable, everything else is a constant. The integral of acceleration with respect to time is velocity, and the integral of velocity with respect to time is position. Here's four rules uh, for integrals. These are similar to the derivative rules, just opposite. So the integral of a constant is just going to be the constant times the variable. So integral of d dt 
equals d times d plus c. You have to add plus c. c is just any constant. We don't know what it is yet. We'll get to that. Uh, the integral of t to the n is just going to be t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And the other rules, you can see those there. So let's try this out. The acceleration in this problem is 2t. So we want to find the velocity function. So we need to take the integral of the acceleration function. So the integral of 2t, we follow the rule, and we're going to get t squared plus c. If we want to find the position function, let's take the integral of that velocity function. And we end up with t cubed over 3 plus ct plus d. c and d, they're just constants. They're probably just different constants. So that's why we write them as different letters. Now the reason we have those constants is because of initial conditions. If we have initial conditions that are not zero, we have to take that into account. So here, at time equals zero, our position is already five. So let's see what we do with that. So we have a velocity function, 3t squared. We take the integral of that 3t squared. We end up with t cubed plus c. Now we know that x of zero, x at time zero, equals five. So we plug in 0 for t, and solving for c, we find out that c is 5. So we plug that back into our function, and our final answer is our position function equals t cubed plus 5. There's one more type of integrals. This one is called a definite integral. We're taking the integral from one point to another. The same rules apply, but you don't have to do the plus c. There is one more step, though. So let's try it here. We have a velocity function t to the fifth, and we want to find how far does it go from two seconds to four seconds. We write it like this. You can see you put the two seconds and four seconds on the integral. Uh, the upper bound is on top, the lower bound is on bottom. So you take the integral the same way. The integral of t to the fifth is t, six, t to the sixth over six. Now that bar is so that we can keep our limits. We haven't used them yet, so we need to keep them there so we don't lose them. What we do with them, we take the limit that's on top, the four, plug that in for t, and then subtracting, plugging in the bottom limit for t. So we plug in 4 for t minus plugging in 2 for t, punch all that in the calculator, you end up with an actual answer this time. No plus c's or d's or anything like that, you just get an answer. Now in this class, we're going to use calculus, but it's not going to be super hard calculus. Uh, the stuff you do in calculus class is going to be much more difficult. Uh, so don't worry too much. Calculus can seem intimidating, especially when you learn it in less than 10 minutes. Uh, but it's really not that bad, and uh, you're going to do fine. See you next time.